You have heard his work at LA Kings home games for over 25 years. He gets you moving in your seat and yelling at the other teams. He's been a part of championships with the Lakers, Kings, and Dodgers. We chat with LA music director and organist Dita Rule next on this edition of Locked on LA Kings. You are Locked on Kings, your daily podcast on the Los Angeles Kings. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, Kings fans, welcome to Locked On LA Kings, your team every day. Thanks for making Locked On LA Kings your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Please like and subscribe if you're enjoying this content. My name is Eddie Garcia. I am your host of Locked On LA Kings. I've worked in sports media for almost 30 years. The past 20 plus years have been at the Fox Sports Radio Network, where I'm a co-host, sidekick reporter, and NHL analyst, also co-host of the Puck Podcast, a weekly NHL review show. That's been putting out content for the past 16 years and, of course, a passionate LA Kings fan for over 30 years. If you have gone to a sporting event in LA, especially an LA Kings game, you have heard and been entertained by this man's work. Uh, He was a part of the LA Lakers from 2001 to 2016. He's been the Dodgers full-time organist since 2016 and has worked over 25 years with the LA Kings. Uh, He's also worked multiple Olympics and many other marquee events. He is currently the music director and organist of the LA Kings and the Los Angeles Dodgers. And he is Dieter Rule, Dieter, awesome to have you with us. I know that uh, you were an LA native and you grew up a Kings and a Dodgers fan. Uh, you must pinch yourself every day knowing that you get to combine your love of music and sports and get paid to uh, support and entertain fans of two of your favorite teams. I do. Yeah, I feel fortunate. You know, um, I get to play music and I get to watch the games and both things that are very special to me and uh, definitely pinch myself. I appreciate it. Now, I know that you've told this story many times, but if you wouldn't mind sharing it again, I know that uh, early on in your life, uh, you had an opportunity to do something that helped to maybe reinforce uh, your your dream that maybe you could do this as a a living someday. And I think you're about 12 years old. Uh, Can you just tell us how you got your first taste of what you're doing now? Yeah, yeah. Um, um, <clears throat> Channel 7, KABC, was running a thing called Sports Fantasy during the local news. And I was watching the news for whatever reason as, a, as an 11-year-old. And um, they ran a segment like I said, it's called Sports Fantasy. And this guy was playing football with the Rams at a practice. And I thought, oh, I would love to do that. And it was hockey season. And I, I would love to maybe play hockey with the Kings. But if that's not possible, could I play the organ at a game? And, you know, I wrote them a letter and then they, they called and they said, we want to go with that second idea. We want you to play the organ at a game. And I thought it'd be great. So um, it just so happened to be, it was taped or filmed in those days, the day after I turned 12. Um, at the forum, uh, November of 1980, I got to play a part of a, a Kings game against the Winnipeg Jets. And the rest is history. <laughs> and that was just the very beginning of it. And I got a taste of it. And I was just so hooked. Um, I guess I, I was really into it even before then, when I was probably 9 or 10, 11 years old, going to games, not just at the Forum, but during the summer at Dodger Stadium. And I'd hear Helen Dell on the organ. And for whatever reason, that just always spoke to me. I'd hear the organ. I was like, wow, that's like that's pretty cool. you know. <laughs> so that's kind of how it all started for me. Now, some people might think that you just show up and and play the organ, uh, but it's I, I've seen behind the scenes what goes on. It's uh, certainly much more coordinated uh, than some people might think. And you're not just the organist, but we also mentioned music director. You're playing the music. If we're talking specifically about the Kings games, I know you're playing all the music. Uh, you're doing the little chants and the claps. And, and right. in addition to playing the organ and things are coordinated with you know, you've got in-house announcers, uh, you've got things going on on the video board. So it's a lot more complicated than people might think, right? Definitely, definitely. I mean, when I started, my first year with the Kings was uh, 89, 90. And it was a lot more basic, you could say. It was just the public address announcer. And it was me. And that was it. And now, like you mentioned, we have all these other bells and whistles. We have in, in arena hosts, um, lights and lasers and you know we have tv timeouts and we have we have our own in-house dj 
Um, there's a lot going on. There's contests at intermission. Um, whereas when I started, like I said, it was just me and the, the PA announcer, and we communicated by telephone. And I wouldn't huh. arrive until later. Go, were you going to say something? No, no. I just the telephone part of it is just yeah. Uh, it's funny. Yeah, I mean now we wear production headsets. So I can yeah. hear the producer, uh, the scoreboard operators, etc. But in those days, it was the telephone, and the scoreboard operator sat next to uh, David Courtney, the late David Courtney. Uh, our longtime PA announcer, and I would pick up the phone and call her. Na her name was Nancy, and I'd say, "Hey, I'm going to play Go Kings Go," and she would type it up. Okay, G O K N G S G O. She would type it up. So next whistle, I'd play something into Go Kings Go, and it would flash on the board, the old board at the forum. Go Kings Go. So we've come a long way. In fact, in those days, they still allowed smoking at the forum. And I remember during intermissions, you see this big cloud of smoke hovering over the ice <laughs> it's, it's a whole totally different time people can't even figure we, we didn't even have a video board they're like what no video yeah. board but no there was no video board until the 91 92 season at the forum it's so funny how far we've come i did an interview not long ago with uh, a guy named brian kennedy uh and he was talking about we were talking about the day that wayne gretzky was traded to la and he i was asking him where were you and how did you find out and he said that he was going to college in ohio and there was no internet, there was no cell phones, and he didn't know it even occurred for a full 24 hours. Uh, so we have certainly have come a very long way. Yeah. Uh, now, Dieter, I know that you and I have kind of gotten to know each other a little bit because of the Ben Maller show, which I work on on the Fox Sports Radio Network. And you were kind enough to invite me up to your area there so I could see kind of behind the scenes, you know, how you do what you do. And uh, I, I wanted to share something with people that I, I think that the, the thing that I really got my attention was that, um, well, let me, let me show this in a second because I have, I, this is how big of a nerd I am, Dieter. I have a little uh, siren that I put next to my TV. And when the Kings are on the road and they score a goal, uh, I, I have a little remote control and I hit the button and it, it plays the horn. <laughs> so hopefully that's not too loud, but you get to do that for real. That was the one thing I remember. I was like, oh my God, Dieter <laughs> plays the goal horn. There's like a trigger yeah. under your desk and and you right. light the horn and, and when the Kings score a goal. Yeah, yeah, which requires focus. I need to pay attention, <laughs> <laughs> you know? And um, I had some close calls, you know, where I thought it went in and just hit the crossbar or something. But no, I, there's a switch that's attached now to the organ and um, I just pull the trigger and <laughs> we've got real <clears throat> two sets of train horns up in the rafters uh and they're pretty loud <laughs> as yeah. you know yeah but it's the real thing so that i mean i don't know maybe i'm just a geek but i i find that to be i know i'm sure you play the music and you and we're going to talk a minute about maybe things that you've done to affect the crowd but just doing that i just think that's such a kick that's amazing well it's fun yeah i mean you just like i said it requires focus and yeah. Um, like the whole, th it's, it's, it's a pretty big production, you know, it's like, yeah. um, for a typical seven thirty game doors open at six. And, um, so we got to be ready to go by six. Um, did I lose connection? Here? You're good. You're good, dude. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Okay. A little message there. Um, so anyways, uh, seven thirty game doors open at six. We, we run rehearsal between five and six ish. Uh, then we have a production meeting before that from around 4.30 to five. And then I usually arrive at least an hour and a half before that, maybe two hours, just so I'm not too rushed. And then um, make sure all the gear's working and then get a little practice time on the, on the, on the big Roland organ, which we, I think we're gonna, this will be our fourth season now with it. Um, so you have to come check it out. I don't think you've seen the new setup, which no. is not. Yeah, but uh, I'm over by the Stanley Cup banners above Section 328. So um, there was no room for it where I was when the building opened over above 317. So we got the new organ. Uh, it's like this big old 500 pound piece of furniture. <laughs> it's, it's huge and bulky. And uh, the only place they could find room in the building was over on a spotlight uh, tower platform so uh that's where i've been the last four years and i love i love the view it's kind of like back when i was at the forum i was in the end zone mm -hmm. near the canadian flag which i'm also near the canadian flag now um 
and there's no fans can stand they won't block my view um it's a great end zone view and uh you have to come check it out eddie I, I look forward to doing that. Absolutely. Uh, much more with LA Kings and Dodgers music director and organist Dieter Rule in a moment. But first, betonline.net is your number one source for all of your pro and college football betting needs and sports info this season. Find all the latest football developments, game matchups, news, and podcasts at Bet Online, your continued source for all your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, and scores. It's the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite sports and events, including baseball. MMA, boxing, and golf. Head to Bet Online today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet Online, where the game starts. More with the LA Kings and Dodgers music director and organist Dieter Rule. And what is it like to do this, Dieter? Dun, 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 dun. Anaheim sucks. Uh, what, what is it like to play something like that and get reactions from the crowd and things like that? Is that fun? Yeah, I mean, it's fun to get any kind of reaction, really, um, especially, you know, when the team's doing well. Um, and I think my favorite just the Go Kings Go um, because just the, the, the positive energy there. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it helps when the team's doing well. I mean, I don't have these magical powers. Like, if we're losing 7 nothing, then it's, I can't really <laughs> do much with that. So, um, but I think I'm there to kind of, like, unite the crowd. And, uh, I'm kind of like a, a huge, I don't know, like a huge cheerleader. I've got mm -hmm. like all the, the volume, the, 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 the more volume than, than all the other fans. Right. I can like play something and it's just booming through the speakers and, um, it's like, come on guys, let's go, go Kings go. Right. Um, so it's, 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 uh, definitely it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun, <laughs> but it, you know, it takes, you gotta just be ready, be prepared, you know? Right. And, uh, yeah, it's certainly very fluid as far as you don't know what how the game is going to go and things like that. I, I wonder, has there ever been a moment? I know we're specifically talking about the Kings, but has there ever been a moment where you felt like you did something? You did a go Kings go at a certain moment and the Kings maybe scored right after or something good happened and you thought, hmm, I wonder if maybe I had a yeah. little bit of effect on things. Yeah. Kings and Dodgers, too. I'm like, I, I just did something and the crowd was like, chanting along or they're like charge or something like that and then boom something happened i'm like oh all right it must have worked <laughs> you know so yeah there's those moments for sure i know you like to have some fun and i know that you uh, have gotten some attention for uh some musical selections that maybe you played at dodger stadium when certain houston astro players were up to bat or something like that have you ever I don't know, towed the line a little bit on something you decided to play to, to maybe troll another team or something like that? I guess so. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Um, I mean, especially with Houston, because it was uh, pretty difficult in, in 2017 when they won the World Series here yeah. on the field at Dodger Stadium to watch that. And it just felt like it just, it just was hard to, hard to watch. And then to find out later, of course, you know, they were cheating. It's just like, damn. That yeah. sucks, which it's one thing to be caught, but to this day, I don't think they, they ever really came clean with their apologies. And obviously the players weren't in trouble, only, I guess, ownership or the GM. And it's just kind of like when you see certain players that just still didn't own up to it and they're like, oh, you know, blah, blah, blah. I was like, then I was a little like, well, okay, what can I play when, when, they, when the Astros come out? So I started thinking of like, you know, bang on the drum or mm – -hmm. uh, there was an old show called Doug. It was on Nickelodeon, an animated show, kids show. Um, and there was a song called Banging on a Trash Can. So I kind of learned that. And, um, and of course, Ace of Base, I saw the sign. So a little stuff like that that yeah. I thought would be kind of subtle, but I guess people noticed it. <laughs> yeah, that's fun yeah. to be a little creative with that. Yeah. Uh, I know that this time of year, There's Dieter... This time of year, I know, yeah. can be very hectic for you. Uh, you've got uh, the baseball postseason coming up, and the Dodgers certainly are favored to go on a, a deep run. And, of course, hockey season is getting started as well. Uh, I don't know, back in the day, you were doing Lakers and Kings at the same time. I mean, were there were there other times when you actually did two events in one day, or is that just not possible? No, it's happened. It happened before when I was doing Lakers and Kings. It was rare, but there would be some doubleheaders. And that was a little easier in the sense that they're in the same building, mm -hmm. but now, um, 
during the overlap season, which is like spring or fall, there might be, um, well, coming up October 2nd, uh, the Dodgers play at 1 o'clock, and the Kings have a, a home preseason game at 6. And the plan is I'm going to try to do both. Um, but that means I need to get from one venue to the other. So I'll probably get to uh, to crypto early in the morning that day, set up, make sure everything's ready, then head to Dodger Stadium, do the game, and then get to crypto in time for the Kings game. Wow, that's uh, that's a full day. I'm sure I yeah. know that, and I know uh, I, you know. I watched a video uh, that they did of you, and you were kind of talking about behind the scenes stuff, and you were mentioning that you know you've got to be kind of on it at all times. You've got to really pay focus and attention, and then after it's all over, you've got to find time to kind of wind down, right? Yeah. Because you're just uh, your, your focus is so yeah. uh, kind of be present in the moment, right? Definitely, definitely. You know, I don't just. Uh, shut off like that because you know I think it's just all the uh, the adrenaline you know yeah, all the thousands of Kings fans and and game's over I'm like I'm still up here you know and um, so it definitely is a process of like okay game's over just get home maybe have a snack maybe catch up on Twitter or something um, but I may be up till I don't know 12 30 or 1 just like when, when I'm finally ready to when I've unwound so uh, more with Dieter Rule in a moment, but just a reminder that the Locked On NHL podcast has you covered for all your league-wide NHL talk with a rotating cast of local hosts from the Locked On NHL channel, breaking down by biggest stories in hockey five days a week. Uh, subscribe for free on your favorite podcast app or on YouTube. Uh, so we're wrapping it up with uh, LA Kings and Dodgers music director and organist Dieter Rule. Uh, just curious, um, how different is hockey from baseball, would you say? I mean, I don't know. I guess there's the obvious ones indoor outdoor summer winter um baseball there's no clock you know so you don't know how how long you'll be at a game whereas in hockey you pretty much know a 7 30 game will be wrapping up by 10 30 at the latest usually usually earlier um and then i mean for me personally there's just the the uh at dodger stadium it's I'm part I'm at the end of the open air press box and there's no air conditioning mm. and the heat really gets to me. You know, um, if you're just just think being in an office that's 85 degrees, 90 mm. degrees. And we recently had a homestand in early September here. We had like a six game homestand. It was just grueling for me because it's just like, you know, even at night, it just wasn't it was wasn't cooling off. And it, it whereas at Kings games, you know, it's it, sometimes I need hand warmers. <laughs> it can be cold i heard a story no, I think especially, where I especially where somebody using his fingers you gotta you gotta keep your hands yeah, warm. yeah i know right the organist needs to keep his fingers warm yeah so um there's those differences yeah um but i mean i love them both i mean they're they're there's they're sport and they're not scripted you just don't know how it's gonna go um i mean on the entertainment side we have a script we know okay during any breaks, this will happen. During intermissions, mm -hmm. we're going to do this or that. Or during TV timeouts, those things are scripted, but even they get flipped around sometimes based on what happened on the ice. Sometimes you know you lose a TV timeout, or there's a penalty after another penalty, and then there's a goal, and so you have to move stuff to intermission. Um, the stuff that's you need to get in because uh, sponsorship sells that stuff. Right. So um, there's a lot that goes on. Uh, behind the scenes. And like I said, when I started much more primitive, you know, uh, I was sure. pretty much first organ and PA announcements. Um, but now there's a lot going on and it's definitely evolved and uh, it just keeps getting bigger and bigger. And uh, the games are fun though. It's still, you know, for hockey, who has the most goals wins. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Uh, I know Bill Russell, the late great Boston Celtic, won eleven rings. Uh, Tom Brady mm -hmm. has seven rings. You have been a part of many championships with the Kings and the Lakers yeah. and the Dodgers, and you may get another ring coming up. Do you have a? You get rings right for this as the member of the it, organization? No, I mean the organist. From what I've read, the organists don't always get rings. Um, okay. I've been fortunate with the Kings. I do have two Stanley Cup rings. Um, that was totally unexpected. I'm very grateful and thankful um, that that happened. Um, but not with the uh, with the Dodgers and Lakers. They didn't 
think the organist should get a ring. <laughs> they gave us the opportunity to purchase, I think. Okay. So, um, but no, it's great just being there, but um, it's great to win at home. I'll say that. Like when we beat the Rangers in 2014 to win and, and be the Devils in 2012, that was just such a, so fortunate that it worked out to be home, you know? Um, and I'm hopeful someday the Dodgers win at home too. <laughs> Yeah, that would be great. Um, and maybe it means yeah. a little bit more because for the Kings, you know, the Dodgers had won world championships before the Lakers certainly had, but you were a part of the Kings first uh, world yeah. championship. So that's, that's pretty special. I would think. No, I was, it was very special, especially since, you know, being a fan since I was a kid going to games when the Kings had, you know, the triple crown line and then Mario Lassard, he was like my favorite goalie. Um, I can name off all the players, you know, Jerry Korab, Jim Fox, et cetera, et cetera. And then to be there finally for that first cup, uh, what, just a little over 10 years ago now, 2012, mm -hmm. that was just amazing. Like, oh, finally. And then to do it again two years later, um, that that was pretty special, pretty exciting to be part of that. Uh, one, one, one more real quick. Uh, I know that yeah. Crypto.com has undergone a lot of changes and upgrades. Have you been able to check it out? And is there anything specifically with your job that, that is they're, they're upgrading that you're excited about? Um. Not, I, I uh, haven't been down in quite a while. Um, okay. I'll see. I heard that the first phase is mostly uh, some video boards at the other end from where I'm located, and then the ribbon boards, and there's some other stuff that's happened, I think, in the concourse or to a restaurant or, or down below the chairman's room. And then it's a three-phase uh, renovation. I guess the second phase is next summer, which I don't really know all that much about. Um, but I do. I, I did read something about even an, a new and improved sound system. So we'll see. But I got the new toy, like I said, about four or five years ago with the organ, and I'm, I'm I love it. It's great to me. It just sounds so big and full. Um, so, yeah. Well, Dieter, I know you're a modest guy. I uh, seem like a real humble guy, uh, but you are a big part of uh, you know being the experience at uh, sporting events, Dodgers, Kings, especially for the Kings. Uh, we really appreciate you. Uh, great to have you on. And uh, I hope to hear you hitting that trigger many, many times this season uh, with the LA Kings and that goal horn. Thank you, Eddie. I appreciate you. Thanks for having me on. And I hope you get to hear that horn a lot too. Yeah, I look forward to uh, visiting you and seeing the new organ and, and all that. Thanks a lot, Dieter. Have a, have, a great have a great day and thanks for your time. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you. Uh, we very much appreciate Dieter Rule uh, joining us. That was awesome. Uh, and again, looking forward to getting out to crypto.com arena in the very near future and uh, seeing Dieter and hearing him and, uh, and having a good time at the Kings game and hopefully seeing a bunch of wins. Uh, as we close things out, I want to remind you to keep up to date on what's going on with the LA Kings and this show. Please follow us on Twitter. We are at locked on LA Kings. Uh, we'll let you know what's going on uh, with the show and the latest news involving the Kings as well. Uh, if you want to send me an email to comment on anything we've talked about, any show ideas or anything at all, uh, the email address is LockedOnEddie at gmail.com, E-D-D-I-E, LockedOnEddie at gmail.com. Thanks for making Locked on LA Kings your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, Locked on NHL. Locked on Experts give you a daily 30-minute podcast of all things NHL all year long. Stay up to date on everything in the hockey world. Locked on NHL, your daily 30-minute NHL podcast. Again, I'm Eddie Garcia. Thanks for watching Locked on LA Kings. And as always, we say to close out the show, go Kings go.